Today we are checking out the new Ghosts of the Tribunal questline in Skyrim Anniversary Edition. This is one of the biggest quest lines added with the new Creation Club content. And we're going to be starting out with a full weapon and armor showcase, including the masks of the tribunal, all the armor sets, and all the weapons that this DLC adds in, because it is by far the most of any of the other Skyrim Anniversary Edition Creation Club content. But if you want to skip ahead to the gameplay walkthrough, you can do so using the timestamps below. The Ghosts of the Tribunal DLC is very nostalgic to anyone who's ever played the Elder Scrolls Free. Morrowind. But let's start by taking a look at everything it includes. Starting out with the Cleaver of St. Felms. Burn the targets for 25 points. Targets on fire take extra damage and it absorbs 25 points of their magicka as well. Now this is really cool because destruction actually levels your fire enchantments, making them do more damage. So if you're also absorbing magicka and then flinging fireballs at them, it's a really cool sort of spell sword build weapon and obviously it has a very unique appearance big fan of this one next we obviously have the old school ebony mace now this is really just an ebony mace uh, from morrowind it's nice it looks cool uh, it's got a kind of unique appearance and you can obviously uh, enchant it yourself then we have the ebony scimitar which again has a unique appearance i actually really dig the appearance of this weapon especially in the hand it looks awesome and you can actually see the mask of the tribunal engraved on the, the handle there which ah oh, damage looks so cool then we obviously have hope's fire which is the other unique weapon added by this dlc now this is shock themed targets take 30 points of shock damage and half as much magicka damage the damage is very nice on this weapon um, obviously you can't disenchant it or increase the power of the enchantment but for that point in the game it's quite nice even at level one it's going to do that same amount of damage i believe so if you grab it on a playthrough it's going to be a lot of fun to use and especially when you're holding it it just looks even cooler with this dark black obsidian sort of blade to it then we have light of day which is honestly a weapon i didn't expect to even be here 15 points of sun damage undead targets take triple damage so a very useful weapon specifically against undead because i mean the sun damage is just a ridiculous enchantment you can actually get that same enchantment to apply to your weapons um in the base game so it's not you know unique to this weapon specifically but a really cool weapon to bring with you on the dawn guard dlc and i really do like the appearance of it it just you know the engraving and cut out there of the dawn is awesome then we have mega bane i mean this is a beautiful glass sword the traditional glass sword from morrowind very nostalgic indeed there's 60 points of magicka damage to the enemy two hits from this pretty much stops most most enemies from using magical base attacks however usually if you're hitting an enemy with a two-handed glass sword they're going to be dead you know before the magic ability takes effect then we have ruins edge which uh, is another creation club item that already existed but we just kind of crossed paths with it uh, it's a nice bow with a random effect applied whenever you hit the enemy then we have skull crusher i love this weapon i mean it's just a giant hammer that just looks like it absolutely pulverizes anything that it hits so what this does is 30 points of stamina damage meaning that you kind of just stop enemies from blocking you it's definitely quite a poor enchantment compared to other weapons though but i do genuinely love the appearance obviously the use is limited though and finally we have true flame Obviously, this weapon looks insanely cool as well. Um, obviously, when you have it out of the scabbard, the enchantment is very glowy in the red flame. But what it does is it burns the targets for 30 points of damage, and targets on fire take extra damage. So that's a nice effect. Obviously, destruction will level up that damage as well if you have that skill invested in the flame perk ability. Next, we have the Chitin Armor of the Eminent Squire, which is kind of cool, actually. It's like an off-shouldered chit and armor increases light skill by 20 points it's all right um, and then obviously the boots and charge with carry weight the gauntlets are enchanted with increased to one-handed damage doing 30 percent more damage which is really good for a light armored set since you're actually going to be hitting sneak attacks for a lot higher then we have these common robes the extravagant robes and alternate extravagant robes as you can see the robes really do suit the masks and armor set very well with all the traditional markings there and the extravagant robes as well 
also look very nice. I mean, who doesn't like more robe options? Next, we have the Her Hand Armor, which, I mean, this, this armor set is undisputably beautiful. It is a heavy armor set, though, but I just love the Mohawk-type armor. The first time I actually sort of played with this was in The Elder Scrolls Online, and just seeing it retextured in Skyrim from Morrowind, oh, it just looks incredible. I wish they had a light armor variant, though, I must say. Then we have the Indoril armor, which is like the golden version. I do much prefer the helmet on this. The sort of glossy mohawk with the feather duster looks very cool. Um, but yeah, a really nice armor set there. A big fan indeed. We also have Kenro's robes, which are, you know, just some nice robes that are also added to the game. Then we have the Mask of Almalexia which is a incredible looking mask. I mean, I love the design of this mask and just the color is like gold and blue. One of my favorite sort of combinations. Um, and obviously this is heavy armor. Um, all of these tribunal masks, by the way, have the same armor rating and they're all heavy armor, which is really unfortunate in my opinion. We have the mask of Dagoth. Look at that. Looks really nice as well. Green and gold sort of color on that. Then we have the mask of Sotha Seal. Again, very cool looking mask. Actually really fits well with the Dwemer armor too. Understandably so. Then we have the Mask of Vivek, which is actually kind of like a shrouded, peculiar, undead sort of fleshy mask. Um, and I'm sure you guys know why with the lore. Really cool. You can actually see inside it if you turn it around too. And of course, we have the Ordinator's Shield as well. Um, with the tribunal symbol there on it. Then we have the Redoran's Watchman's Helmet, uh, which is it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, it's I kind of like these sort of organic sort of uh, armor pieces that look like they've been made from the enemies in the game. It's very realistic and it works really well. And then we have the Robe of the Lich, which I'm, again, a really big fan of it, mainly because of this central piece with the skull and the thorns going around it looks really cool now the robe itself actually has an enchantment too magicka regenerates 150 percent faster which is in the top sort of section of good robes to have early on in the game now to actually start the ghosts of the tribunal quest line we must read a very specific book located in the island of solfheim which is off the coast of skyrim so now i'm going to show you how to start this quest and how to get there so if you've never been to solfheim before all you need to do to get there is to come over here on the map to windhelm and you specifically want to go to Windhelm Docks, just the right here. Now, once you arrive at Windhelm Docks, you're going to want to board a boat just over here. We're going to speak to a gentleman who's going to take us there. If you're looking for passage to Solstein, you won't find a finer vessel than the Northern Maiden. So he Captain says Yowling hitting the mast with a hammer. I, you've convinced me. How much will it cost? I'll give you a fair price. Not many people headed over there these days. If you ask me, I can't blame them. Things aren't what they used to be out there. A good salesman. You've convinced me. 250 gold, I guess. Um, <clears throat> you've got yourself a ship. We'll cast off immediately. Okay. Fingers crossed that the mast holds up, eh? And now here we are entering the island of Solfheim. Beautiful. Well, here we are. Welcome to Ravenrock. And now we've got to head over to the Temple of Ravenrock, which is straight up this glorious looking staircase. By the way, you may have noticed that we've got like a bunch of texture mods and ENBs and lots of graphical mods now running that make the, the game ball, look very pretty so if you're interested in those mods i'll link my mod list down below in the description for you guys to check out but downstairs in the temple is where we will find this hidden book to actually start this quest which is very i mean it's ridiculously well hidden if you're not reading the creation club notes to start the quest but here we are heretic dossier blacksmith's confessions Kenro was a strange one, always skulking about, pursuing my wares, but never buying. I'd ask him if he wanted a sword, and he'd say, not today. So I'd ask him if he'd fancy a set of armor, and again he'd say, not today. 
every day for a month the same song and dance not today not tomorrow not ever or so i thought one day i open the shop check my wares and i find a mistake in the shipment inside the crate is an odd blue gem lumped in with the usual iron and steel figuring it was a mistake I was about to send it back when Kenro walks in the store. I give him the usual greeting and ask him if he wants to buy some wares, fully expecting him to say the words, not today. But to my surprise, he doesn't. Today, he wants to buy. He doesn't want a sword or a shield. He wants the gem. As he hands me the coin, I get a strange feeling in the pit of my stomach, like this is the last time I'll see him. So I ask him where he's heading. He tells me he's going to the blacksmith. I'm not sure if that's a joke, seeing as I run the forge here. When I ask him which smith, he tells me the dwarven one. In Fal Bafars, my face goes white. Keno say, you look like you've seen a ghost. And I say to him, no. You? He just smiles. And we've begun the quest line, Ghosts of the Tribunal. If you're enjoying it so far, friends, please do drop a like on the video. It really does help support the channel. And if you're not subscribed, Go ahead and subscribe too. We're doing a walkthrough of every single Creation Club mod here on the channel. There's been plenty of upheaval in Solfheim since the eruption of the Red Mountain, both politically and religiously. I've learned of a heretic attempting to use a forge in the Dwarven Ruin to enchant a Dwarven weapon. Travel to the forge in Falbathars. I believe that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. All right, let's have a look on the map here. The Dwarven Ruin is located to the north of Solfheim in the mountain just here. So we're going to go ahead and fast travel over. As you can see, the settlement is now occupied by a Reichling. I'm going to use the Bow of Shadows, which turns us invisible. It's one of the new Creation Club content mods. Hopefully we'll take out this Reichling Rider here. Get Rex up. Before he comes down to us. Look at him in his little spear. A little hunter of the wild. And you're dead. And the Reichling Rider is also dead. Ah, this is the one throwing spears at me. You little blighter. Let's go up and teach him a lesson. You silly hobbit. Exactly. Get Rex up. Look at him. Disgusting creatures. You can actually use the Reichling spears as throwing weapons, though, which is pretty awesome. And also, if we search that little Reichling hut, we should get some treasures, because they like to collect treasures in here and random assortment of items but there were some useful things to humans go ahead and enter this dwarven ruin and see what we might find friends another rightling fort it would seem i wonder if we head further in we'll find some dwarven remnants look at this small fletcher oh get rex son oh there's another one somewhere there he is here he comes Oh my god. A Reichling warrior. Hey, let's see about that. Get Rex up. Let's proceed further into this ruin. Opening these Reichling huts as we go. Look, boar tusk and bellows. Odd collection of items indeed. Seems like they've done a lot of damage to this northern ruin as well. Who knows what they may have awoken in the darkness. Ah. It seems that these traps may have killed them. And I can hear some Dwemer constructs up ahead. Proceed with caution, friends. Do not know what may still reside in the ruin. A Dwemer Saphir master. Be careful, battlefields. If you wait until they attack you, usually you can stagger them. Like so. Get wrecked, son. Give me your sapphires and jewels. The huge ruin down there. Proceed onwards. Ooh. A platform with a lot of buttons. Interesting. What could this mean? seem to have locked myself in by pressing the first button. Let's just try the second button. Nothing happens. Okay, third button. Oh god. That doesn't look safe. Fourth button. Oh, there's something else over there. In the shadows. 
He's gonna get hit by the Dwemer trap of his own making. Goodness me. Maybe this is for the best. Next button. Seems like we're just getting loads and loads of traps every time we press a button. How about this one? Oh my god, it's lucky I was ducking. It's right above my face. To activate the next two buttons. Oh, who's this? Seems like we've activated another trap with the press of that button. And the last two buttons, why not? Okay, I think we're safe, relatively safe. There's a chest in here with five gold, making me rich. We've opened the door onwards, which is a great success, for sure. Let's head through into the forge. Hello there, who's this? Kill the heretic, eh? And Colonel Halat. Oh, get wrecked, son. Feel for me, Nawa. Yeah, fight like a gunman. Oh, hello. You're an angry one, aren't you, sir? Attack me, I dare you. See what your Dunmar people offer. No match for me. Ooh, Hand Colonel Halan Sword, dude. Look at this weapon. Oh. Unenchanted weapon. That's what it's called. Ah, oh, the Forged Gem. Hand Colonel's Note. The Ebony Scimitar. Dude, this weapon looks insanely well done. Look at that. Oh my god, that looks good. It's even got the. Um, the mask of the tribunal on the front of it there. He had Nord Mead, he was having a great time. High roll tar, highly flammable substance used for enchanting weapons. Ah, so we must have to enchant that unique blade he had. We've also got heavy armored helmet, Kerno's helmet. One hand attacks you 30% more damage. Temple priest robes and Kerno's robes, which just have zero armor. Whoa, that weapon in first person is even cooler. Let's read his note. I live to serve only her. Always her. I've found the forge, and when its spark is lit, her fire will burn. The spectre once worked the gears of this swollen machine, but I no longer require his service. The mechanism is simple. With the vial of this pyral tar, I'll have the, all that is required to ignite it. Tar lit the flame once before, and tar will do it again. And when I return triumphant, fire in hand, she will embrace me once more. But I have a problem. The machine requires four gems to power it, and I have produced only one. The others, it seems, are still out there. Yet I have no doubt that as her chosen, she will guide me to them. But now I will return to the temple. The entrance sits above the mine in Raven Rock, perched atop the cliffs of Basalt. Even then, if anyone finds the cave, only the devout know the way inside the temple. I spin the words, and the way opens. We have the lettering of the password. Take that note with us in case we need to memorize that. So we need to retrieve the other gems I assume I can put one in here already. We have one out of the four required gems. We can put the tar in the slot and power this forge. Pretty epic. Here we are back in the open wilderness. Now we need to fast travel, my friend. Raven Rock, just north of the basalt cliffs of Raven Rock specifically. So we're above the basalt cliffs of Raven Rock. Just below me here is Ashfall's Cave where you must venture inside. Hmm. Ah, this is the puzzle. I assume if I activate this... Whoa! That was close. Okay, so we need to get the right runes on the paper that we've been provided already. So it's like C, E, and then upside down U. That's the C shape. 
Then that's the free E shape, and then it's an upside down U. There we go. Now, aha! Activated the ancient temple. Amazing. It seems like some guardians are waiters down there. Let's work our way down there and see if we can take them out. Doesn't seem like we're going to be able to sneak attack them, so I'll conjure my vengeful spirit to distract them. You can never truly stop me and One alternator down. And now, That's the other gets wrecked. The living are right to fear the dead. Indeed, ordinators are dead. They look awesomely armored, though. They have the old school ebony mace from Morrowind. Indorial armor. Heavy armor set, as you can see. Let's put this on. Ordinator shield as well. Put on my right hand. And the helmet. Even the boots and gauntlets. This guy has the same arm set. So here we have the Ordinator armor and Ebony Mace. This armor set looks really nice. Really nice job remastering it as well. Love the Ebony Mace. Look like a fearsome Ordinator warrior now. Let's venture onwards into this door they were guarding. See what's within. So we're in the temple. Mysterious place it is indeed. <laughs> it's the ghost dying. Let me get out my torch here. It's rather dark within this temple. Also a heartstone deposit. Quite a few of those in this dungeon I've noticed. Good to have another source of those because there was never really enough in the main game. Oh my goodness. Amazed to get a bow out for this one. Means we have a lot of enemies and targets here. A lot of quest objectives. Hmm. Who wants to be the first to die? Or should we? Is someone there? Oh, oh god! Oh! Oh god! No! This is not good. Not good at all. We died. We died. Need something. Need something. All right, this time we should definitely be more discreet. Who is this character over here? What we're going to do is we're going to use the slow time shout. I think that's the only way we'll stand a chance in this battle. Dude, Here we go. Okay, standing up, get Rex up. Take out all the people in light armor, all the mages. No one can contest me. All I hear is dying people around me. Paralyzed one, this is good for us. Oh. Gotta watch out for these spells. Very careful. Oh, ordinates are very effective at defending themselves. Come on. Drink an elixir of health to boost our health up. Also a potion of healing and resist magic by 10%. Take out this lady. Come on. More healing potions. Thank you very much. Get wrecked, Ordinator. This lady looks like she's from Morrowind, one of the uh, Elder Scrolls Online trailers. I can't remember her name though. She's stunned. Oh, hello. Now you are paralyzed. Oh, careful. Almost hit me there, brother. I don't think so. I see you burn. No, I don't think so, my friend. You are a tanky one, though, aren't you? Now these guys are paralyzed. Take them out. Finish her off. Now you. <laughs> oh, the insults never get old, my friend. Oh. Oh, we didn't get the stagger back. Get back. No more. I yield. I yield. You yield. Get Get wrecked, son. 
my god, it wasn't even a critical strike, and no damage at all there. That will finish you. <laughs> and now you. Oh, went through you, interesting. An arrow to the knee will finish you, for sure. What was going on in this room, I wonder? The last meeting of the tribunal? So here we have the Her Hand Armor. Increase heavy armor skill by 25 points. Look how awesome this armor set looks. I mean, damn, that looks cool. Her Hand Gauntlet. Her Hand Helmet. Block 40% more damage with your shield. Increase your stamina by 70 points. Damn, that's good. And an Ebony Scimitar. Very nice indeed. And the Ebony Mace, all of which is now mine. Look at this lady. She took arrows through the face. Cleaver of St. Felms. Burn the target for 25 points. Targets of fire take extra fire damage. Absorb 25 points of magic as well, though, which is really good. Every single weapon in the Creation Club seems to have this effect. Oh, Chitin Boots of Strength. Carrying capacity increased by 35 points. Chitin Braces of Eminent Wielding. One hand is actually 30% more damage. Very nice. Increased Light Armor skill by 20 points. And we're going to read her journal before we go onwards. Indabar's a riot. Every day he reminds us how we're not worthy to wear his precious Ordinator armor. Even though I'm pretty sure push came to shove, I could take him. But since I'm not good enough to be her hand, just for fun, I started calling myself Almalexia's toe. Dirty little toe at that, with a lot of ash under the nail. Anyway, I tossed the idea to Indabar and knocked back another pint as the veins on his forehead started popping. I also offered to anoint Sindras as Almalexia's navel. Because why not? There's enough body parts on her ladyship for all of us. Indabar didn't think it was very funny. Must have been the blood. Same goes for me. After all, my ancestors were Armagers, loyal to Vivek, and more importantly, know how to take a joke. Can't tell whose side Sindras is on, but you can't really get a read on what the mage thinks, given he's got a mushroom on his head. <laughs> oh my god, this is hilarious. I don't know what I expected, but pretty funny. So Indabar has a journal as well. Let's have a read of this. Five hands served her once, yet those numbers have dwindled. And as I deign to stand here alongside hedge wizards, spell swords, and other vermin on two legs, I cannot help but weep for the lady and her station. Still, I will not allow them to access the armory. They do not deserve the honor of wearing the sacred garb. To do so means they are an extension of the goddess. Our bodies and soul belongs to her, and are fortified by her divine magic. So it was for my ancestors, and so it is for me. As such, I will not see my lady's hands covered in filth. The matriarch may have granted them a place on the dais, but while they stand eye to eye with me, they are still beneath us, and so they are beneath her. I would slay every last one of them, but I stay my hand for her sake. As long as they are loyal and do the lady's bidding, I will allow their hearts to remain beating against their soiled flesh. Damn, son, you savage. The next body. So this was Ethra, who doesn't have a journal. And then this was the mage with the mushroom on his head. Novice robes of destruction. Red around watchman's helmet. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Like the crab shell, isn't it? Mr. Crab. Very nice. I mean, how can you even see out of that? It looks very alien. I kind of like that, though. Everyone's now butt naked in this temple, and it's kind of unnerving to me, to be honest. Quite a humble abode they have, though, in this glorious temple. Let's have a look where this lady was trying to run to then before we slaughtered her. Masks of the Tribunal. The goddess commands you to recover the artifacts of her fellow god, King. We have received word that the mask of Vivek is being transported from Raven Rock to an unknown ship at the dock. We don't know the destination, only that, to ensure secrecy, multiple couriers are being used to hide the identity of the mask bearer. However, our contact at the dock says the courier is a member of the guard who patrols the bulwark, and he has plans of his own for the mask. He's arranged a meeting with the buyer after midnight at an unknown location. His greed angers the goddess. Dispose of them both and return the artifact to her rightful hands. In addition, the goddess temple is in need of new servants, both to restore the temple and to provide a valuable service. Speak to priest Drueth. He will hand you a letter to be delivered to the banished priestess, Afia Veloth in Ravenrock. 
She is a friend of the tribunal and will translate it so that it can be passed to common folk. When you meet her, be sure to also inquire about the whereabouts of our apothecary, Curate Melita. She had been in search of the mask of Sothacil. Succeed and you will be given access to the goddess armory. Fail and you will incur her wrath. The law is as the goddess commands. We have another seal there. The same seal we had previously. Tribunal armory key. Also in here. And she has the extravagant robes of the temple priest and an ebony mace. We've now obtained three different quests. Her word against theirs. Pick up the letter from priest Drureth. Uh, careless curation. Ask about the missing curates. And buyer beware. Track down the movements of the guards. And I guess we can find these mysterious masks. But we also have a key to the armory that we got from her. So... Wow, okay. It looks like an absolutely butchered training area. Who knows what's going to be down here. Very old smithery. And lots of other ruined furniture, including a bedroom. Quite nice beds, actually. What's this on the floor? Ah, this is the priest. Let's see what he has on his person. Propaganda letter, eh? Priestess Velofi. Here is a transcript of the letter we found in the archives. Your expertise on this matter is required, as is your discretion. Can I actually translate that, or do I need to go and take it to someone to translate? Deliver the propaganda letter to a translator. Okay, I guess I could have tried to translate it myself. Could have been fun. Extravagant robes. My goodness, there's so many unique things here. And I've left so many naked elves. A lot of poisons and potions indeed as well. Old gem fragments. Potions of invisibility. And a lot of different alchemy ingredients too, which is exciting. I'll be taking this. What's that? Is that another journal? It is. The priestess's journal. The priest's journal, in fact. The temple is almost complete, but there is work to be done. So much work and not enough hands. Where once stood an armory, now only dozens remain. This would not be the case if the matriarch had delivered justice to the diviner Erdan Relvel for his belevenous comments about Corpus. Instead, she offered him exile. Which to me is more than a reward than punishment. Worse yet, he was allowed to sway Artemis and a few others to join him. We cannot afford to let sentimentality affect our decisions. I need to remind her we are at war and every Dunmore loss is a soldier for the enemy. Hey, goodness me. Really enjoying their roleplay, aren't they? Alright, let's carry on down this other mined cavern. Okay, so this takes us back to the smithing area. So we've been through this entrance uh, and the one with the book on it. Now we let's go through the entrance to the left here. See what we can find. Oh, there's actually a herb garden here. So this is kind of like a player home as well. Oh, it's got some ash yams here. Very nice. In the ash they're growing. How, how lovely. And the nice daylight and waterfall coming down to feed the crops, of course. A lot of yams that apparently can be stolen. And then, let's go to the left here, behind the priestess book. Let's see what we can find. Hello there. <laughs> Get Rex on. Huh. Sculptor Vistar. Ooh, Sothasil Shrine. Blessing of Sothasil. Increase your Magicka by 10 points. Magicka regenerates 5% faster. That's good. And also increase your Magicka by another 10 points. So we get 10% increase in magic regeneration and 20 points of Magicka. What does this do? Vivek. Blessing of Vivek. Prices are 5% better and Sneak is increased by 5 points. That's actually really nice. And again, it stacks twice. Oh, we don't have Al Malexia here. We just have these two shrines. I guess this was for the third shrine? Who knows? Maybe the sculptor never finished it. Doesn't have a journal to explain what happened here, though. Oh, there is a journal. The sculptor's journal. The statue was my masterpiece. My one true love. So the statue is the one in the main cave entrance. Some say she is too large, too grand, but I would have made her a thousand feet tall if I could. My love is a titan. And we are but useless worms groveling at her feet. 
However, to scope a goddess came with no shortage of anxiety. The pressure I felt to chisel every line, hone every curve, and I do so with exacting precision was almost too much to bear. But the end result was one I take immense pride in. The days, the anxious voices in my head are no more. Instead, they speak with a pathos of ease and routine. I've fallen into a simple routine, making the shrines with basic carvings in the tribute to the three, for Almanexia, for Sophosil, and for Vivic. Yet, it is a risk that makes a sculptor an artist. It is daring that turns the ordinary into sublime. I dare to sculpt the goddess once, as I chisel away these blocks of stone, doing the same hired work. I wonder, is it too late to be that bold again? And then we have another room up here. With some food in. It seems to be an office of some kind. With another journal on the desk. Books of death brand. And flutes and also a sleeping area. Oh, what's in here? A mammoth's tusk, eh? Another ebony dagger. Okay, let's read this journal. When I first entered the great chamber, I was there again, in the high chapel nestled in her glow. The great pillars surrounded the stone, where the goddess Almalexia once stood, as if it were washed in the fire of Mournhold. Mournhold had shed its skin to reveal a temple of rock and bone. I knew then that this stone was the heart of our goddess, and through faith, love, and sweat we have slowly restored her flesh. Now that it is almost complete, my thoughts turn to my old friend Erda Relvel. He was the diviner whose scurrying brought us to this holy place. Without him, none of this would be possible, yet time and toil changed him. To the point I question his devotion. Wherever he is, I hope he has regained his love for her. Regardless, our work is not to end here. With her hands to guide us, we will rid this world of her distance. We will reunite the fires of hope and truth under her banner and theirs, and let the light of Alm Sivia shine on the servants and apostates alike. A lot of heretics indeed, I like it. A red candle? Have I ever seen a red candle? Hmm. So this way must be the armory. Aha! Started the Ashen Heart. Why is it so... What the hell? Hello. Activate mannequin. Oh, it's like bugs. Right, reloading didn't help. They're now laying down. Look for any clues in the armory. So, they've got all the armor sets that we actually previously found, which is very cool. Including the Red Room Watchman's helmet. There's also a display case here with ebony scimitars in. Oh, one sec. Oh, it's Ebony Miss. Light of Day. That's a unique weapon. Hidden down the bottom here. Light of Day. 15 points of sun damage. Undead targets take triple damage. So it's like a, a Dawn Guard weapon, essentially. Really nice design to it. Go ahead and put that on our hand. Another Ebony Mace. Ooh, Mega Bane. This is from Morrowind. Okay, let's have a look at this. Yes, look at that. Damn. Very cool looking blade indeed. Really like the look of this sword. Really nice. Right, let's have a look in here. There is Skull Crusher. Also a unique weapon from Morrowind. Skull Crusher does 30 points of stamina damage. Very nice indeed. A huge hammer. And Mage Bane, or not Mega Bane. Mage Bane does 60 points of magicka damage. Mega Bane. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, we have another gem in here as well. And we have the Priest Arthemis's note. And now, oh, one sec. This mannequin has the Mask of Almalexia on it. The Mask of Almalexia does, has 21 armor. Let's put that on. This is the one we saw in the trailer and it looks insanely beautiful. I mean, look at the, the colors on that. It's like gold and blue. Kind of like corroded with these horns looks incredibly cool and then the back plate is also protecting the back of your head slightly i guess pity none of them are enchanted though okay so there's also a note here which was next to it the matriarch does not speak of what remains locked behind the gate he says our way is to serve the goddess and the tribunal but Eden was right 
The artifact speaks to us. I feel its heartbeat rattling in my head like a loose rock. Rattle, rattle, rattle. A curious song. Not a heart of blood, but stone. Yet the gate remains for all intents and purposes impenetrable. I see no levers or chains, no secret buttons under the display cases. There is nothing here, save for a few broken pillars and mannequins. In fact, I grew so wary of their stares I covered their faces with masks. It was not until that moment that the solution came to me. What if the mannequins themselves are the key? Three faces and three masks of a tribunal. But which mask goes on which face? When memory fails, I go to the sculptor's room and pray at the shrines so that I can match the blessing to the symbol. I feel now I can only solve the puzzle, but without the masks, it is useless. Erdan hates it when I worry. He tells me to be patient, that the masks or not, our masters will show us the way. I have no choice but to believe. Use the mannequins to solve the armory room puzzle. Very cool idea for a puzzle, in fact. And I believe this could be where the last gem is located, behind this last grate. So I believe the tribunal masks must be put on the different mannequins. But they refer to the different symbols in the sculptor's room and we just took that note. So we need to grab the final mask and then we can come back and solve this puzzle. Ah, uh, so it turns out the statue of Almalexia just beneath it is the shrine to Almalexia. So now we can have a look at what active effects we have. So this increases our heavy armor skill by 10 points and one-handed weapons do 10% more damage. I think that probably adds up to 20% because it obviously stacks twice and we get 20 points of heavy armor. Let's head outside and have a look for the rest of the tribunal masks. We have a few leads to follow in this regard. So we're back in Raven Rock now and we're just going to find this translator who apparently is residing in Raven Rock Mine. I believe I know who it is actually. It kind of makes sense he can translate this stuff. Hello there. Damn it, woman. I was told you can translate these letters. Of course. Uh, wait two hours for letters. Okay, Be I'll just stand here and wait. And pass out the letters if you're finished translating them. Thank you. Here, this is for you. Now, let's, um, not talk about this anymore, okay? Alright, let's have a read of these letters before we actually go ahead and give them away. Propaganda letters. You have lost the temple. But you are not lost. The right place exists in the wrong time. Know that when the great egg bar, Dao, cracked open from his rotting yoke, spilled into the distant priests and heretics, full of lies and falsehoods, that gave shape to Otholoth and his reclamation. But in reality, the Bible spewed by the lie rock cannot fool a minister of truth for long. The tribunal will rise once more, and the Grand Inquisitor will judge all from the beginning. The entry to our temple is the ending of worlds. I also understand that the temple curate has gone missing. It would seem so. Oh, she's giving me another note. <laughs> curate Melita's plea. You or whoever is reading this, I need your help. Well, it's a stupid thing to write. Of course you're reading this and you wouldn't be staring at a piece of paper and not read it, would you? Not unless you're illiterate or mad. Not angry, mad, but I clip my toenails with a fork, mad. You get what I mean. Point is, I think I've found it. The mask of Sotha Seal in Kagrenzel. A dwarven labyrinth with a surprisingly high vowel count. It is high up on the Velothi Mountains, and you are a Velothi too. Funny how that works out. There is just one problem. I caught myself in some contraption, and now I'm not sure where I am. I've decided to make camp here, and I have some mercs I hired to find help. He can't write or read or put together a coherent thought, but that's why I'm giving him this letter. Really, I should have just taken the mask and left the orb. You'd think I'd know better than to fool or a trap that's obvious. But the orb was glowing and cute and but kind of lonely. Side note, if you come across to rescue me, do not touch the orb. Ah, Kagrenzo is one of the most unique dungeons in Skyrim, so that's really cool. Be careful out there. Kangrenzo is in the very south borders of Skyrim, so we'll have to go back to Skyrim to do this quest and get that mask but before we do that we need to give out these other letters so we need to go back to raven rock temple to do this which is just on the left and then we need to inquire at the docks about this mask that's apparently being sold there let's head to the temple first excuse me but the temple is for followers of our faith alone outsiders aren't welcome here. 
Very nice. I'm going in anyway. Huh. Though our spirits may be low and dangerous. Yes, there are. Heretics have been passing around these letters. Thank you. Here, this is for you. All right, then. 1,500 gold, so giving you heretic letters. I'm telling you about it. Oh, that's pretty nice. Her word against theirs, indeed. Now we need to track the Redoran's guards' movements after midnight. So let's go ahead and wait here until nightfall. All right, so we're at the Raven Rock docks. It seems like the guard is currently on top of the wall, actually. Oh, yeah, you can see him just walking over there. All right, so we're on the ramparts of Raven Rock, and I can see this guard who we need to track heading towards us. Let's walk past and pretend we're not following him definitely. He definitely looked at us. And we'll just follow along and see where he goes. What he's up to this late at night. Where are you going, Mr. Guard? Guess we'll find out soon enough, won't we? Leaving the city, are we? He has left the city behind him, but where is he going this late in the night? And it seems like he's walking to this abandoned house, Old Atius Farm, just south from Raven Rock. What is he doing out here, though? Oh, oh, a secret trap door. Let me pickpocket him for the key. Oh, no, he's gone downstairs. And it's open. And now what is he doing? Oh, it's Nazim. Oh, no, it's not. Something mysterious is happening. What was that? I am invisible with the burr of shadows, but apparently they've sensed my presence. Oh god, we're in a confined place. This is not good. Get out of here, buyer. It's gonna be a challenging one. Let's use a slow time. We can take him out. He's a very tanky boy though. Full heavy armor trying to sell the mask. Sacred mask of the tribunal. How dare you. Quick paralysis. An arrow right through the throat. Who won't know what hits you. It was battle brother. Truly. Dead. Both of you. Ooh, Atius Farm Seleki. And Redoran Guard's note. He also has the full arm set of the guards. What does the nose say? For 20 years, all I've been is a loyal guard, and I do what I'm supposed to do. Pay my taxes and pray to the gods. But they return me no favors. I pray for riches, and I get guard duty. I pray for a good woman, and I get more guard duty. Now I'm supposed to deliver this expensive-looking mask to a temple. Well, it's time I made my own luck. I'm selling the thing to this Imperial I met at the Netch. I'll just tell the priest the bloody mask got swallowed by a gua. So good luck finding it now. 20 years and I've never spoken a lie. Now I have no choice but to believe me. I actually feel kind of sorry for this guy, you know? This guy is the buyer. The dirty Imperial. Oh my, it would be so... It's actually Nazim. It's not Nazim. It would be so funny if it was Nazim. Could you imagine? Oh, he's got one of the Ford's gems and the mask of Vivek. Look at this. Damn, that's terrifying. So this counts as heavy armor as well. It only gives 21 armor. It's nice as a helmet. It looks really cool. Uh, is there anything else down here of value? Just a secret meeting spot, really. Nothing else. So let's head back upstairs to Solfheim. So now we need to fast travel back to Skyrim to go to Kagrenzel and find this other mask. So now we're back in Skyrim. Grenzel is located on the east mountain range just here, right in the Velofi Mountains. Let's fast travel over there. Here we are outside the walls of Kagrenzel, an ancient Dwemer dungeon. One of my... One of the most interesting dungeons in the game, to be honest. Essentially, how you do it is you go inside and there's a trap you can activate that we got warned about in the letter. Before we activate this trap, you can see all these bodies here. People who previously were encased. You can see the lining around the edge where they would have been trapped. Dead bandits. This isn't the lady we need to find, though. So it looks like we're going to have to touch the strange orb. 
and seal our fate. It seems to be scanning us. Let's see if it will let us in. Very entrancing indeed. Ooh. Now it's sunk into the floor. Oh, oh god! Oh my god, it's so awesome! What a fantastic dungeon idea. You can die if you hit the rocks, by the way. Just stand right in the middle. Whoa. Still rocks falling from the roof. So if we swim underwater here, we can see the other bandits floating along with the current. You can see where we fell from up there, but if we come to this huge waterfall, just on the right here, it does seem to be a way out for us, which is very good indeed. They do take care of the Thalma that are clearly taking up residence in this ancient tomb. Falling apart. Oh, Indiana Jones! Oh, oh, oh god! A Night Prowler! Die! Now if we carry on working our way through, we'll eventually find a way to Stony Creek Cave. There's a cave much further down in the Velothi Mountains. It seems like we may have actually met the person who was making camp here who escaped Kagrenzel. So let's give her a nice welcome party. As we know she is evil. Oh my god, this guy has... Let's use the slow time shout. He's actually got the Bow of Madness or something else. There's a unique bow. Alright, here we go. Let's take out these banners before they kill us. A lot of bandits here. The bandit chief as well. And this wizard at the back. Get wrecked, son. Cannot beat me. Look at them, they don't even know where I am. Moving way too fast for them. Wrecked. Trying to avoid this guy by keeping him and me between us. Oh, dodge the arrow like a boss. There we go, now he's paralyzed. We'll finish him off. Get wrecked, son. Nice kill cam there. Bandit Chief had lots of. a lot of cheese. I'm gonna eat all of this cheese. Um, and then he has the Ruin's Edge Bow. Randomly applies one of the effects to the target. Frost, Demoralize, Frenzy, Drain, Magicka, or Paralyze. Ruin's Edge is a pretty unique weapon. It looks amazing. It's part of the Creation Club content. However, it's not new. It was previously added. And it's actually got an eye that looks at you when you aim, which is pretty cool. It even blinks and everything. And whenever you shoot it, it applies a random effect to you. So if we had let him hit us, he may have got, like, uh, the chance to paralyze him. Oh, and she has the mask of Sotha Sil. Let's pick that up. Let's have a look at this mask, then. Damn, that looks terrifying. The hell of a beard. It's like very Tutankhamun, isn't it, with the Egyptian... He had so much chi. Why did he have so much... Oh, it's because Ruin's Edge... Uh, it was probably a gift from Shea Gorath, and that's why he has all the cheese. Now, we need to travel back to Solfheim. Okay, so now we have all the masks, we can solve the puzzle of the mannequins. Ignore the fact that the mannequins are on the floor and bugging out right now. So, we know that the order of these should be Almalexia, Sotha Seal, and then Vivek. So, we have the three masks, and we start out with Sotha Seal on this one. And then we put Almalexia in the middle, just here. And then Vivek on the third one to the right. There we go. Oh! So you can see these masks are actually on the mannequins, but they're like in the floor. <laughs> Doesn't look great. But now we can open this final chest. Erden's Revel's Note. And Hope's Fire! Target takes 30 points of shock damage. I mean, this blade almost looks alien, doesn't it? Wow, okay, so let's grab that. And there's a few spells in here. Dragon's Plate Insulated Gauntlets. What? 
Let's read this note and find out. There's also a strong box here. I was told that without the mask, the gate would not open, but the priests underestimate my master's will. It was Dagoth Bjor who opened the gates and beckoned me forward. And when I wear his face, I speak his truths. And from his words, I spawn the cure that will spread across the world. My temple brother, Arthemus, was the first to receive its blessing. His one melancholy face has been carved into the most delightful shape and his mouth stitched into an complete smile. He must be quite pleased with the changes that I have made, as I have heard no complaints. I feel now that he is truly happy. You may have already met him, slain him with her hand. Perhaps you have met all of my master's little pets as they descended on the temple. I know this would happen, but there must come a time when the tribunal's champion will challenge my master, as the Neverine once did. The tribunal has three heads, and you wear them all. And so, by opening the way, you are worthy of dying by my master's hands. Come to the graveyard by Tel Mithrit. My master's creatures will dine on you there. My god. Grab back the masks here. And now we can exit. Hello there, ash zombies. What are these? <laughs> ash zombies, my goodness, they were never cool. I haven't even got a face. Look at this. Damn, look at that. That's actually terrifying. Oh god, there's more ash zombies outside as well. Ah! Die! Alright, we should really change to an actual weapon. Let's use the light of day. Get wrecked up. Doesn't do sun damage though, so it's pretty useful for getting rid of ash zombies. So the new quest tells us that we need to kill the priest of Dagoth Yur, which is over here near Tel Mithril Graveyard. So here we are at Tel Mithril, the ancient mushroom. Now, just over here, where the graveyard is, oh my goodness. Yep, there's a lot of ash zombies down there. Okay, we can probably take them out from above with my bow. I really want to try out Hope's Fire, though. I mean, 30 points of shock damage from this alien-like blade is pretty cool. Use the Bow of Shadows here, my friends. Right on the Priestess. Get wrecked. Oh, she got paralyzed as well. Absolutely destroyed her there. Another one for you, my friend. Retrieve the mask of Dagoth Pure. Take out the rest of these zombies first before they come out of the graveyard and kill us all. Whoa, are they firing fireballs at me now? Who's that from? Oh god. Oh, there's an ash zombie here as well. The ash spawn are much more fearsome, so we should definitely take them out first. Get wrecked, son. I'm gonna save this bull netch. Come at me, Ash Zombie. Oh my god, he's not messing around, is he? Finish him. Alright, now we've killed the Ash Zombies. Nice little bull net here, bless him. Ah, Erden. Oh my goodness. Final gem. For us to go to the forge and imbue the weapons. Oh no, this is Dagoth's mask. Look at that. Go ahead and put that on. And Robe of the Lich. Magicka regenerates 150% faster. So this is now what we look like. Pretty damn cool. There's also sarcophaguses that can be... Oh, God. A bit weird. Oh. Oh, my God. So I can activate this. Oh, wow. Staff of Calm. Nothing in this one. There was a skeleton in this one, though. A golden. Okay, let's fast travel, my friends. Back to Kvalblaths, where we can go back to the forge and ignite the fires. Inside we go. All right, here we are at the entrance to the forge. Let us now place the final gems into the puzzle.
on the final gem. Whoa! Now the forge is burning. Look at this. Fresh hot steels and lava pour from its mouth. So it says, apply the pie royal tar to the unenchanted weapon and use the forge to enchant it and restore true flame to its former glory. All right. So the unenchanted weapon's just here. A very beautiful weapon indeed. Let's go ahead and equip it. Then we can use the tar, highly flammable substance used for enchanting weapons, and we can apply it to the weapon. Place the unenchanted sword in the slot. Use the forge to enchant true flame. Oh, true flame added. Let's go ahead and get out true flame and hops fire. Oh, amazing. Look at this. Here we are with true flame and hops fire, and they just look absolutely awesome. I mean, damn. Really cool quest line as well to enchant these weapons. We look badass. Like a red and blue lightsaber. And with that, we have finished the second greatest sized quest in the Elder Scrolls Skyrim Anniversary Edition. If you guys want to check out the other one, which lets you go back to Oblivion and see the Mythic Dawn cult trying to recreate an Oblivion gate. I will link that episode down below in the description. But thanks for watching this one. Let me know what you guys think. I think the rewards on this one are pretty damn awesome and I'm excited to use them. It's a pity the masks weren't enchanted, but I guess I can enchant them myself. And I'd also be nice if one of them was light up. Let me know what you guys think of the weapon collection. Do you think they should have added any other specific weapons on Morrowind or do they do a good job?